Okay, so today I'm going to be working on a board that is also for uh, Mr. Darby. So the last video, I was, after editing and everything, it was, I think the whole process was about two and a half, three hours. I edited it down to two. And that is with my, with my editing style where I don't edit out a lot. So this is going to be the other board that he brought in. He asked me, again, this is somebody who's taking the class uh, this summer, and he asked if I would do a video of his board repairs. So this one has an issue where you plug the charger in. I'm going to show you right now what happens. You plug the charger in, you don't get a green light, and you get this blinking voltage bullshit. So let me just show you what I mean when I say blinking voltage bullshit. So it's plugged in. I'm going to drag this oscilloscope over here so that you can get an idea what's going on with it. I'm not going to zoom because I still am sick and I want to avoid getting up and exerting myself as often as possible. So I do this, I do this, see that? It's, oh, it's there, oh, it's not. Oh, it's there, oh, it's not. Oh, it's there, oh, it's not. All those little spikes, that's not supposed to be spiking. That's supposed to be a clean 18.5 volts. And when I look, and I, I drive myself a little nuts for a short period of time, and then I look by the charging area and let's see what I see. And oh, what do you know? Oh, look, the diode is missing. See that? <laughs> Where's my tweezers? So, this little shit here is supposed to be sitting over there. Uh, let me show you what that thing is for and what that thing does. So that's this, D6910. And D6910 is this. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what that's for. And you can laugh, and you can say that I'm dumb, and that I don't understand electronics theory, and that I'm a dumbass college dropout who's clueless, but one of the things that uh, that uh, my first boss, uh, Sam Fields, told me was, you know, I'm never afraid to admit to the world just how stupid I am. And I asked him, because I had asked him how he knew a certain things that he knew, because he, he knew a ridiculous, he just had a, a lot of information in his head. You know, there was, there was a lot of stuff that he was wrong on, but there was also a ridiculous amount that he was right on. And he just had a, a really good, well-rounded set of information in his head. And he said, Everything I learned in life is because I was never afraid to admit just how stupid I am. And you got all these people running around say, like, trying to pretend that they know more than they actually know. And here's the thing. Nobody, nobody really wants to teach you something or nobody's going to try to show you something if you act like you already know the answer. Because if you already know the answer, then why would somebody else give you the answer? You understand? So I'm always fine. I don't care who knows that I don't know something. I don't give a crap what other people think of me. You're going to have those people that are like, I can't believe you make money when you don't even know the purpose of that in a circuit. I don't know what half of this thing is for. Honestly, when I look at this, and I know that like a month from now, when I really look into this and I try to figure out how it works, that I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh at this. But when I look at this right here, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. And it's just, it is what it is. I'll figure it out eventually. And when I do, I'll happily explain it here. But... At this particular point in time, I don't know what the hell half of that shit is for. But what I do know is that it's missing. And because it's missing, because it's not on the board, I'm going to put it on the board. And once I put it on the board, we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to. Oh, God, I'm tired of being sick. We're going to see what happens to it. So, first things first. Add some solder. Added some solder, not solder. I know I can't bring myself to say solder. And I want, you know, I don't know how the right way to say it is, but I do know that it, even if it is the right way to say it is with an L, that I'd rather just keep saying it the wrong way because that is just. I just can't bring myself to say it that way. So that little shit just ran away and is gone. 
So now here's the part where we, we, we go and we find another one. And this is our uh, last remaining one, so no losing it. This is really damn small. This is ridiculously small. I mean, I don't know what the orientation is of the other, of the other one. That's why I'm taking a new one. Did it stick? You in place, little diode? Okay. Now that little diode is in place, let's see if we have an improvement in the results when I connect the charger. So now when I connect the charger, I have a light. Before, I did not have a light. You can't see the light because of the crappy lighting in this room. But that is what it is. So we're going to reconnect this, and let's see how much of it works. Now again, I like to do this in stages. I don't want to reconnect everything. I don't want to drive myself nuts before I see that something actually works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug the fan in and see if the fan spins. So the fan here spins. So now I'm going to reconnect everything and see if it works. Now you may be wondering at this point, am I going to be charging my standard board repair rate even though all I did to fix this was replace one component that took me about 20 seconds? And the answer to that is fuck yes. Because the last one over here that the same gentleman sent me, very nice guy, I spent three hours on it and I videotaped every damn second of that misery and I can't bill a single dollar for it. Not only did I spend two and a half to three hours of my time on it, but it also has a $35 chip on it that I'm not going to take off because the time it's going to take to put that, take that off and reball the old one and put that back on is not even worth the $30. So this, uh, hopefully it gives you a better idea of how the billing structuring works here. Again, did this board get fixed in no joke 30 seconds? Yes. And I'm going to charge full for it. Because when I spend two or three hours and 30 bucks on parts on something that I cannot bill for, I do not bill for it. And I'm not going to break this thing out of spite and send it back to him like and stabbed and say, fuck you, because I didn't get to get paid for it. I'm just going to send it back in here. Whatever. It doesn't charge the battery. It's better than it was before. Enjoy. So we're going to put this back together and see if it works. What do you want? I figure I should give you a little bit more of an idea of what that circuit does, even if I'm not totally up on every part of it. I know enough to get an idea. So the whole idea here is this is voltage from the charger, right? <laughs> and this voltage from the charger right over here, this firstly you have the one wire circuit here. You know what that is. We've talked about it a billion times, which is powered off of PP3V42. This is the PP3V42 power supply. In order for the PP3V42 power supply over here to get input from the charger, it needs uh, let's see, for this transistor to open. See, so this is the input over here of the PP3V42 power supply. This is the power from the charger, and it's going to open through this transistor based on the power that's present at the gate. Now, if there's no path over here, because this diode is missing, then you're not going to wind up with the right voltage on the gate. And again, why a diode is here instead of something else, and what this does. Maybe I'm just an idiot at lead electronics. Maybe it's the 103 fever. Maybe it's because I don't work on this board very often. I don't know, but when I do figure it out or feel better, I'll be happy to discuss it in, <coughs> in another video. Oh. But right now, I'm just about ready to finish up this and something else and head home and pet my cat and sit under a blanket until next week.
Oh, by the way, another problem. Uh, there's a screw that is not magnetic on this machine that you need in order for the battery to get grounded to the computer. And uh, Mr. Darby, sir, I'm sorry to tell you that you lost that screw. Uh, it's, it's, it was noted the first thing when this machine got checked in. And that is that sucks because I don't have spares of that and there is nothing I can do to help you on that matter. Uh, this is a really, really stupidly designed machine. So they have this little fucking uh, cube here. And this cube allows the battery to attach to the board with these 40, 50, 30, whatever little stupid contacts. And then there's also a large screw that grounds the battery to the board. It really is dumb. There's no reason to not have a connector that simply latches and clicks on like every other laptop on earth and every other Apple laptop that's been made for the past six years. They just decided, I guess every now and then they decide to do some stupid shit for no reason. They corrected it with the A1502 Retina. But... This one does that, and it's, it's really it's stupid. It's, it makes no sense. I know that you, you probably keep good care of your screws. You just lost this one because it's not magnetic. That's another thing that's really dumb. You know, it's not like if this is an iPhone where you have a fucking GPS and you have to worry about the magnet being near the GPS chip or anything like that. It's just, it's just, it's just a dumb thing. And... It sucks to lose it. So if I find one I will in that I can spare for you, I'll include it in the box. If I don't find one, that will be your adventure to find a screw. So yeah, this is the 820-3462 board, which is one of the most miserable ones to put back together because of all the little nooks and crannies and especially the stupid battery. I would hope that in particular you don't have the problem with this machine of issues running off of the battery, since if I can't find you a spare screw, uh, there isn't really much I can do in terms of testing that for you. I guess I could do something silly like solder something to the board, but there's no reason to do anything silly just yet. Alrighty, so back to showing you what's going on here. So, as you can see, I am booted into an operating system. Again, this guy's trackpad doesn't work, so I had to attach this one. And you can see the mouse is moving around. So this was totally dead, not turning on. The first issue that we had with it was that little diode was missing. So instead of getting a consistent 17.4 volts in the DC and rail, we were getting 17, 0, 17, 0, 17, and 0. And the computer's not going to turn on and it's not going to do anything if you have 17 and 0. Nothing in this is going to turn on. No power rails are going to turn on and actually do anything. The second problem that we have is this guy's trackpad is keeping it from working at all. And that, that, that's going to be your problem. Along with finding that little battery screw that you lost. I'd even give you one if I, if I could buy one, but you, you can't buy one, so... You really have to go back on your desk and find where you left that little screw. And I know, again, I know exactly how you lost it. You lost it because it's not magnetic, and it, it sucks. But, ah, uh, well, what can, I, what can I do for you? It works. 